I don't understand. Who are you? Just a couple of freaks, same as you. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated superhero shows. Now you saw what this can do. So apologize before I break your face. For this list, we'll be looking at TV series about superheroes that aren't as popular or claimed as they should be. Animated series will not be included as they deserve their own list. Is there a superhero show that you think should get more attention? Let us know down in the comments. Number 10, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You could be forgiven for having assumed that this show was just about the team that cleans up after Marvel's superheroes. The Battle of New York was the end of the world. This, now, is the new world. People are different. They have access to tech, to formulas, secrets they're not ready for. In actual fact, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. saved the world themselves more than a few times. Although seemingly killed off in 2012's The Avengers, Clark Gregg returned as the fanboy secret agent Phil Coulson to spearhead missions against superpowered threats. Rising Tide is trying to draw us out. I think it's time they succeeded. While the series started off as a run-of-the-mill spy show with some light science fiction, episodes quickly embraced the more comic book elements of the source material. Super soldiers, inhumans, time travel, and adventure in space are just some of the things you can expect from this underappreciated show. Number 9. Cloak and Dagger This freeform series set in the MCU centers around two New Orleans teenagers, cynical street thief Tandy Bowen and high school athlete Tyrone Johnson. Stop running. Who are you? While Bowen can emit light daggers and see people's hopes and desires, Tyrone can teleport and see people's fears. Their contrasting backgrounds and viewpoints make for an interesting pair. Although they often clash, they eventually team up to fight criminals, including the Sinister Despair, who runs a human trafficking ring. Going somewhere? Tandy, wait. I don't think so. Unfortunately, the emotionally driven story and grounded criminal elements weren't enough, as the show was canceled, reportedly to pave the way for Marvel Studios' future on Disney+. You can catch them again, though, on the third season of Runaways. Who are you? What the hell have you done? Number 8, Gotham. A combination of detective fiction and superhero spectacle, this take on the Cape Crusader's beginnings is much more than just an origin story. My name's James Gordon. I'm a detective. What's your name? It's okay. You don't have to talk. Gotham is jam-packed with a nearly absurd amount of Batman-related characters, from the likes of Jim Gordon and Selina Kyle to the Penguin and the Riddler. I can fill a room for just one heart. Others may have me, but I cannot be shared. What am I? What? It's a riddle. Answer the riddle! The show manages to expand on what we already know about these popular characters in surprising ways. Although it's a prequel, the series was given creative license to depart from the comics, so it's ultimately a completely unique take on the costumed criminals of Gotham. That's what you promised Master Bruce all those years ago in the attic. He saved him. Gave him hope. Number 7. Runaways. When a group of teenage friends discover that their parents are supervillains, they go on the run to fight crime and right the wrongs of their families. What do we do? We run. Throughout the course of the show, we watch the heroes come into their own as they use their respective gadgets, magic, and superpowers to fight witches and aliens. 
These threats would be harrowing and disturbing for any kids their age, so you can't help but be invested when they rise to the occasion against impossible odds. We gotta split up. We gotta try and lose them. Everybody go. Come on. While the unpredictable staff of one and telepathic dinosaur are especially fun to watch, it's really the cast endearing group dynamic that makes the series worth watching. Carolina, come on, the eye makeup doesn't have to be perfect. It's just breakfast, dude, and I'm starving. When are you not starving? It's not always about the makeup, you guys. I was taking a minute to be grateful. Number six, Black Lightning. Cress Williams plays Jefferson Pierce, the high school principal and selfless moral compass of his community. Where is the future? Right here. And whose life is this? Mine. And what are you gonna do with it? Live without any means necessary. But at the end of the school day, he dons the mantle of Black Lightning, the vigilante protector of Freeland, Georgia. This CW show came at a time when four Arrowverse shows were already airing on the network. <laughs> But where Black Lightning differed was in its authenticity and focus on black history and social justice. Additionally, the show also has a great family dynamic that delves into the drama of a superpowered household. With biting social commentary, a lovable cast, and solid special effects, Black Lightning should have been more popular than it was. Don't get your draws in a bunch. It wasn't my decision. Number five, Legends of Tomorrow. If you thought shows like The Flash and Supergirl were crazy, wait until you see this Arrowverse series. When the evil Vandal Savage conquers Earth in the year 2166, a team of B and C list heroes and villains are enlisted by a time traveler to save the future. What are we going to retrieve, Captain? Oh, not what. Who? I need you to pull up some files, Gideon. The eight men and women who'll be joining us on our little crusade. Legends makes full use of its eclectic cast of deities, sorcerers, and metahumans. Some of the most notable members include the resurrected assassin White Canary, the goofy optimist Adam, and the pyromaniac with a heart of gold, Heatwave. If it's chaos that you want, chaos you shall have. That's more like it. Throughout its seven seasons, Legends of Tomorrow avoided taking itself too seriously. Where some might think of that as a criticism, fans know that it was the show's greatest strength. Robo me is steel with normal skin. And he has giant arms? I mean, come on, pick one, the ego on me. I mean, he's clearly overcompensating. Oh, no, no, he's really filling out those pants. Number four, Raising Dion. Most superhero shows are inspired by a wealth of source material, but this Netflix drama is based on only one somewhat obscure comic book. You're so lame. No, I'm not. It's never gonna make it. It's gonna die. It's gonna kill himself. Alicia Wainwright stars as Nicole Warren, a widowed mother whose responsibilities are intensified when her seven-year-old son Dion, played by Josai Young, exhibits supernatural abilities. The family-friendly coming-of-age story is mainly about the dramas of parenthood. However, this angle made for a refreshingly heartfelt series that shouldn't fly under the radar of any superhero fan. Have you ever teleported with someone else before? No. Well, how do you know you can do it? Because you said I can do anything. Of course you can, Bug. Of course you can. I just want to keep you safe. Number three, The Tick. Adapted from the work of Ben Edlund, this show about the bombastic blue man bug graced the small screen at a time when superhero media was starting to get a little stale. Wait. You believe that too? Evil wears every possible mitten. Ready? The great Peter Serafinowicz headlines this satire as a mysterious yet over-enthusiastic vigilante who named himself The Tick. Alongside timid office temp Arthur Everest, played by Griffin Newman, The Tick exposes a supervillain conspiracy. But I 
am not part of any sort of bigger plan that you have going on here, okay? I'm trying to prove that the terror's alive, and that's it. You're gonna have to do more than just prove it. The Boys and Invincible may be Amazon Prime's most revered alternative superhero content, but this earnest homage should be praised for being just as out there. Wait a sec, is this one of those secret identity deals? Because I have opinions on those. No, it's, it's my only identity. Number two, Doom Patrol. Everyone loves an underdog, and in the case of this HBO Max show, it's just that in every sense of the word. When five people with volatile superpowers can no longer live normal lives, they're brought together to process their traumas and deeply seated fears. What on earth are you doing? What are we doing? We're going into town after the chief explicitly asked us not to. This is your most reckless scheme yet, Jane. Crazy Jane. Doom Patrol exceeds all expectations in its creative yet respectful approaches to depression, body dysmorphia, ableism, homophobia, and childhood trauma. The truth is Larry Trainer had felt like a monster long before he ever was one. The characters often spend entire episodes struggling just to get through their daily routines. And it's the cast incredible performances that make their journeys all the more endearing. Audiences may not have tuned in for the poignant metaphors, but many stayed for them along with the beard-eating bounty hunter, man-eating butts, reality-altering bodybuilders, and sentient street. Danny is all around you. Danny the street? Danny's on the street? I think she's saying Danny is a street. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Krypton, an in-depth look into Superman's family. It began the day my grandfather was tried for treason. That day saw the rise of a terrible new power in Krypton and an end to all we had previously known. Pennyworth, the origin of Batman's butler, a high stakes prequel about Alfred's early years. Alfred Pennyworth, subject made contact seeking assistance regarding travel to and residence in America. Subject is a recruitment target of long standing. Agent Carter, a thrilling spy successor to the first Avenger. I knew how it start during the war. His help was invaluable. He may be a great many things, but he's not a traitor. We're all aware of your record, Agent. And I'm sure being Captain America's liaison brought you into contact with all sorts of interesting people. Constantine. DC's perfectly cast foray into the supernatural. John, it's time to face the truth. Nine years old and suffering for all eternity. The only one suffering here is you. That's on me, man. There are no demons. Why do you keep telling me? Now make me believe. Preacher, the grimmest action horror that superhero shows can offer. Things will escalate. That's what these things do. They escalate. And violence makes violence, makes nothing much at all. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Legion. When mutant David Haller finds himself in a war against a government agency, he must learn to control the multiple personalities he's manifested and battle a mysterious psychic parasite. You're getting better though. The voices, you're not seeing things that aren't there. And that brief description barely scratches the surface. Instead of just relying on dialogue or traditional superhero action, Legion stands out as a successful experiment that leaned heavily on abstract and over-the-top visuals to tell its story. Dan Stevens in the titular role gives his all in a performance that is simultaneously intimidating, understated, and charming. The supporting cast also included Jermaine Clement and Aubrey Plaza, who somehow overshadowed Stevens at times. No, it's cool. It's cool. What was I gonna spend the rest of my life popping pills from a little cup? 
Although the show is praised by critics, Legion's avant-garde style didn't quite connect with audiences. It's long past time it got more recognition. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.